Welcome to African Teapot Podcast. My name is Exi and I'm your host. Journey with me through Africa's vast variety of culture, heritage, and discuss issues most African families face, both home and abroad. Make sure you add this podcast to your frequent podcast rotations and don't forget to share and follow this podcast. Hello listeners, thank you so much for tuning in for another episode on African Teapot. How far, how on Monday. Hopefully you guys had an amazing week and thank you so much for those of you who let me know how, you know, updates, sharing little bits of your lives and stories is pretty much fun to listen and you know, and ride back and forth with you guys. And I realized that we also had uh, a few subs- new subscribers in the house. Thank you for joining the African Teapot family. And on this, you know, in, in this space here, I always encourage communication within ourselves. So don't hold back if you have something to say, something to criticize, something that you want me to share as well. Anyways, today's topic is pretty much, as you saw, the um, trocosy system wives of the gods you'll be wondering and now what is going on with this topic today but um over the week in the course of the week i came across an article off of the conversation.com and also i watched a documentary by um bbc african news regarding this system and um it's something that we can't discuss all of it in one episode but i'm gonna try to just let you guys get a hands in to what it is okay and then we continue the conversation subsequently as the weeks progress but um i followed the story as i would put little audios in the course of you know our conversation so you can get um what i'm talking about but i came across this documentary of a survivor a girl who survived this system and this is ghana west africa when i was seven i was brought to this country and forced into a system I knew nothing about. This is me. I was held as a slave in a religious shrine. What crime is this child paying for? Her uncle committed adultery. Thousands of women across West Africa have lost their freedom because of a practice called trokoshi, and it's still happening. Does she know why she's here? Now I'm on a journey to try and understand what happened. To find answers to questions I've had on my mind for years. What is Trokoshi? And why did my family give me away? This system is being practiced in three uh, countries in West Africa by um, little um, areas within those countries. Okay, I'm saying this for our non African listeners to understand that we are not talking about this, meaning it is like a we it's happening in the whole of Africa or, or within a whole country or anything like that. But um, it's not sure when the trocacy system began, but it's an ancient practice and its name, the word trocacy, comes from the Iwe language and the Iwe communities are found in Benin, Togo and Ghana. So these are the three countries I realized that this practice is being is taking place in, okay? And um most of the people that live in the southern uh, Volta region of Ghana, southern Togo and southern Benin believe in the practice of the Chokosi system, okay? And the, we don't have a date, as I realized. We didn't have a date because it's very, a very old practice. But it came to public knowledge in the 90s. And by 2002, 4,000 women and children from 52 shrines were liberated. Um, that is what I saw in the um, paper that I read. And I believe it's more than that. But the author of um, the article, Wisdom Mensa, um, who is a visiting instructor from the University of West Florida. He was part of the people involved in liberating this 4,000. So I'm thinking that's why he said 4,000, but I'm pretty sure it's more than. And this article was written in 2018. So I'm pretty sure it's more than that because it's still currently going on and we still have organizations fighting against this practice. 
um so what is this system based off of like you're wondering so pretty much it is when a virgin girl is offered to a shrine okay to pay for the misdeeds or a crime committed by a member of her family so pretty much it's not her but someone else's crimes that she's being used as i don't know what i would call that as a slave pretty much to go so um, to go work in the, work in the shrines and live in the shrines for all their lives, and if this girl happens to die or something happens to her like that, she is replaced with another virgin girl. I know that that was just shocking when, when I read it and listened to it. It was pretty heartbreaking, but these girls are as young as six years old, guys, uh, ten year old, eleven year old. I mean, it's just crazy. And the fa- so pretty much if I believe that you've offended me and I go to the shrine and lay curses on you and things like that and it comes to your attention, you have to cleanse that. But you have to cleanse it by using a virgin. And so these girls are sent there and like we know, sexual abuse happens. They are being sexually exploited and they are also uh, used as, you know, laborers. Um, so they lived in, they lived in and they still continue to live in really terrible conditions and if you're wondering, yes, this system has been, uh, the government has stopped on, on, uh, on this practice. It has uh, uh, termed this practice pretty much illegal. But we all know when things are illegal or they say they are criminal or anything, actually stopping the belief is just something different. Um, so this is going on currently. The region's practicing it currently. They are practicing it illegally. Okay. Um, So I'm just going to leave that for now and I'm going to play the little parts from the um, documentary I uh, listened to and I watched. Now that I'm older, I feel ready to explore the cultural background of Chokoshi. It's practiced in parts of Ghana, Togo and Benin by various ethnic groups, one of which is the Ewe. I'm driving into Ghana's Volta region, a large area of lakes and rivers where Chokoshi is most prevalent. So right now we are following Richard, whom I met um, the first day of of, um, the journey. After our chat in the Uber taxi, Richard invited us into his community to speak with a group of Ewe elders. To mark our arrival, they were saying prayers and pouring libation to their gods. But they believe if you offend the gods, they can bring misfortune. I would like to know if there has ever been a human sacrifice. He's talking about Chokoshi, where you are banished from the community to pay for the crimes of your family. Another elder tells me that two of her relatives were sent to the shrine. Next week, we'll just take off from there. But if you have any questions or you're wondering, you please go do more research. But I'm going to come next week with more, like as to why this practice is still, you know, prevalent. What were the circumstances that would get people to believe in doing something this ridiculous or this just outrageous and inhumane? And at the same time, look at what is being done to stop this. Okay, so we're going to look at that next week. But let me know what you think and I'll just see you guys then. Thank you for listening and hope you join me for the next episode. You can always reach us via email at africanteapot at gmail.com and follow us on Instagram at, at african underscore teapot.